previously on Car Track. The reason why we're here is because Auto Tempest told us to fix something on our long, long repair list. So for my wrenching segment, I'm going to start with a de-pimping as much as I can with this car. Flood Gallardo owners of the world will soon embrace the edge shield. It's a little fuse and all I have to do is pull it. It's fuse 15 and it's a little five amp fuse. You pull it and immediately the car is better. Gracious, whoa. Whoa. Look oh. at this. You got it working. Oh yeah. To put your bubblegum fixes to the test, you must take your cars on a road trip from here to one of the most prestigious car events in the world, the Amelia Island Concours d'Elegance. Tomorrow morning, you will drive 200 miles in the wrong direction. And to show how practical your cars can be, you'll do the entire drive on one tank of fuel. And one last thing, no highways. Oh. Yeah. How's, how are we gonna do that? I don't, I don't know. After a late night wrenchathon, it's nothing short of a miracle that our cars worked as well as they did. But the sun was shining and we were ready for the latest challenge from Auto Tempest. We were to drive our used supercars 200 miles south to an undisclosed location using no highways and only one tank of fuel. The only thing we had to do now was fill our cars up, which in my case was much easier said than done. Alright gentlemen, the moment of truth. Supreme Plus. Okay. So you have present a Gallardo yeah. Spider. Yes. And this exact circumstance is how yours burned to the ground before you purchased it, right? A little bit, yes. Correct. And up until now, whenever I would add fuel, about every two tenths of a gallon, it would spew into my face. Okay. Oh. So yeah. here goes everything. My car's fuel intolerance had been cured. It was flowing freely. We were all so impressed with my mastery of wrenching that we forgot we weren't filling an empty tank. When it clicked off after five gallons, the flashbacks set in. We all tried getting more to go in until Freddy noticed fuel coming out in a new way. It was overfilled. Uh, okay, this is this is interesting. The, the gas is <laughs> all the way at the top. Is that usually how you fill your cars? I, mean, I need everything. So they bit. go until they're they're overflowed? We, sh we should give him some space. Because this might you know. Well Well you what's good is that you don't have a roof, so you can jump out. Okay. Jump good. out. Good. Okay? So we have fire extinguishers? Uh no. So at this point, I slowly backed away from Ed's Italian powder keg. I filled up my V12 GT car and we started on our long highway free journey and we immediately found ourselves caught in traffic, which neither us nor our cars appreciated very much. So Ed, the funny thing about your car being on fire is everything's behind you. So theoretically, you could outrun your own flames. I can outrun anything, Freddy. You got any clutch smell? My clutch smells very faint, so I'm gonna pretend like it doesn't exist. Both Taurus engines functioning nicely. Both Ford Taurus engines online. Your exhaust now drowns out your power steering line, so I guess that's kind of fixing another thing, right? Tyler, are you noticing the lack of rear downforce from your compromised rear diffuser? <laughs> no, it is not missing it one bit. <laughs> Our attempts at killing time in rush hour traffic got a little boring after a while. So we took it upon ourselves to slightly bend Auto Tempest rules and make up some of our lost time on a highway. Just for a little bit anyway. So guys, I took a look at the pin that Auto 
uh, Tempest drop and it looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. Uh, any ideas as to where it could be? Is it where they launched on the rockets to prove that the Earth is flat? Oh, too soon, buddy, too soon. But as I learned as I got up to speed, the only thing flatter than the Earth were my rear wheels. So this is how fast I cannot go because the vibration from my wheels is atrocious. That sounds like a personal problem. Here, let's all pull into this uh, service class. The vibration kept getting worse, and then Freddie informed me that my rear diffuser was falling off, so I pulled off to fix it using some factory-approved methods and adhesive materials. Looks like you're having fun. Yeah, this is living the dream right here. Ugh. Yeah, the moment Ed tried to cannonball this thing, you know, any kind of speed at all, it just parts started falling off. Nice. The Lamborghinis are usually so reliable. <laughs> and his wheels. We set off yet again, making great time on the highway with Ed's car looking like it drove through a pinata factory right up until the unthinkable happened. Again. So, uh, it didn't work out, did it? No, I, I, I think I need more tape. This, this didn't hold well at all. Um, I'll get more. Uh, you two are the tape experts, that's for sure. It's not, I needed the gold kind for this. What's that? Particular taping. Uh, I just got a text from Auto Tempest. Well, we're not there yet. Uh, yeah, they're they're pretty angry. So it says, "What part of no highways did you not understand? Not only are your cars not as practical or fuel efficient as a C8 Corvette, but it's no question that you are all cheaters." I mean, a little bit. Instead of a nice scenic drive through Florida like you would have had, you will now be directed to the most punishing car environment imaginable quarter mile drag strip where you will test your cars against a manufacturer's original quarter mile times. That doesn't sound bad. Good. Bad. The person who comes closest will pass. Good luck with your fragile clutches and egos. That's good advice. I don't have a clutch. <laughs> I don't want to ruin what's left of mine. I literally have no clutch. Great. <laughs> Kansas and pretty much every road in Kansas is, is just like this. So I've done quite a bit of drag racing. It's, it's very simple. When that light turns green right there, you just go. And since we're not worried about reaction times, we're just worried about the quarter mile time. It doesn't matter how close you get in the green. Also, Ed, go step on that. What? Is it like <laughs> asphalt quicksand? So this is from previous drag racing where they make it all sticky so the cars can launch harder. But with our fragile European cars, it will break it if we launch. Speak for yourself, okay? My car is built for this, okay? My car is specifically, this is, James Bond drove this car, sort of. Yeah, at probably more than 10% clutch. So what is your original quarter mile time? 12 seconds and three uh, tenths of a second. 12.3? Yes. I'm actually 12.5. I'm 12.7. Really? I'm, that car's faster than a V10? It's pretty darn heavy. The convertible aspect of being a Gallardo adds uh, about 400 pounds. Really? Okay, so we have three, five, seven. Those are the times to beat. I think we should get on the track. Who's going first? Double O Freddy here's going yeah, first. Yeah, you're how so it's confident, done, sir. Okay. All right, yeah, no, no, no pressure. So, this is gonna be fun. I'm staging in my Aston Martin V12 Vantage. And I went too far, so I'm not gonna go back a little bit. All right. So, sport mode on, and go. Come 
great, but that was a lot of fun. 1272 at 116. 127 out of the box. Okay, so that means that I only have like half a second to go, a little less than that? Yes. You're okay. really gonna risk your clutch for half a second? I kind of want to now. Good luck. <laughs> My second attempt, like the car, had been just shy of perfect. Something I can blame entirely on me and not in any way on the car's increasingly smelly clutch. I took my best time of 12.7 seconds and then let Ed prepare for his very first time down the drag strip. While my colleagues found my first run adequate, I knew my waterlogged Lamborghini had more in it. And just what the car needed, my check engine light's gone now. Really? I think I, we checked it. I'm pretty sure that's not how it works. It's, it's, uh, this is my wrenching. Italian tune up. That's yes. it, yes. that's it. But the top has to go up. Yes, do you think yours will? It will, but it's quite embarrassing. Does it count as up if there's still holes in it? It's, it's disgusting, but I'll, I'll do it. Okay, the immobilizer. immobilizer. Yeah. One day, one day you'll yeah. remember this. Here we go. Do we need to help? Yeah, just, just watch it, please. Watch it. That's eight whole cylinders. Yeah. A little prayer. F1 technology. F1 technology. Don't fail us now. Power press. No! <laughs> Look at that hole. That is, uh, That's that is impressive. So cool. Alright, sport is on always on so that's no problem where's the block oh oh whoa too far too far okay reverse it beeps every time you're in reverse just like a truck there we go okay and i'm in first this time i'm not gonna go backwards so this is going to be a very easy launch i am not gonna dump the clutch on this thing because every time i do that i would depreciate this car horrendously because i'd lose five percent of my clutch go Ciao, Mr. Clutch. How much is a clutch on one of those things? Oh, it's about five, six thousand bucks. So that run was five, five to six thousand dollars. I whatever was left, yes, on the tab there on the clutch. Holy cow! Man. That that was that was I bad. Thought, I thought he was gonna just baby the thing off the line. No, Tyler. Tyler just goes full send. Okay, well, okay. good job, Mr. Yeah. Tyler. I mean, this track is stickier than the buttons on that center console. I don't. I mean, it is not going to be kind to cars. <laughs> I want to see him do it again. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? 13.7. Uh, the same? 
13-7. I'm, I'm the same as you. No, I got a 13-3. Oh. But there's there's a few differences. Mainly, there was a lot of smoke coming out the back of your car. Yes. You, you might want to be less ginger with the clutch. It's probably the cheap kind of smoke, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I, I said that I was going to take it easy, but then it just happened. The lights changed, and I just I had to floor it, because that's what, that's what you do. That is what you do, and you did. Um, do you smell this? Are you smelling this right now? I smell what the movie's cooking. Ah. <laughs> that sweet, sweet Wichita clutch. Okay, here we go again. Was that fun? Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Buying new clutches a quarter mile at a time. Did I improve at all? Yes. Uh, no. Uh, you improved in the volume of clutch smoke coming from the rear of your car, but uh, you ran another 13.7. So. Really? Yes. Because yes. I gave up. I gave up a lot of clutch for that just to try and beat you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you did a 13.7 against a manufacturer time of 12.5, so 1.2 away. I did a 13.3 mm -hmm. against a 12.7, so six tenths away. Right. And yeah. you did. 12.7 and against what was 12.3, which is 0.4 away, and I okay. am the winner. Now, now, I noticed that if you go to the internet and you Google the quarter mile time for a 2015 Aston Martin V12 Vantage, yes, there's a lot of magazine tests where it did a 12 flat, a 12 one. So if Aston Martin had not lied about how fast this car was, and if you hadn't supported them and co signed that lie to us, then I believe I would have won this contest in my amateur first pass out drag racing career. Batting a Agreed. thousand. Three, hundred percent. In what Ab universe is that a lie? Yeah. I had the this fastest one. car. I had the, the closest most time. most expensive car. Yes, the, the most expensive car because it's quality. Look at it. But regardless of that, we did not yet sort out Auto Tempest's original premise to us today right. to see who could be the most fuel efficient. So obviously we diverted from their original idea, but when, when I got here, I filled my car up and it took about 8.6 gallons of gas. Uh, Tyler, what did George do? 7.1. What? So <laughs> this poorly running eight cylinder car that was supposed to be less fuel efficient is better than my Lamborghini? I didn't cannonball it, Ed. Well, I just drove it normal. I mean, it's a Camry. It's, of course it's gonna get good gas. Yeah. Well, how, so, how did the Taurus do? Yeah. <laughs> well, the Taurus, I'll have you know, 10.7 uh, gallons. 10.7? Yes. Mom and Dad, you need to stop fighting. Please. Please. <laughs> there is one way that we could settle this, like gentlemen. Cage fighting. No, race. <laughs> Except, I, I'm, I'm not, not racing. I am I'm totally not done. I'm yeah, not I'm. That again. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that either. No, oh, the drag strip, yeah, launching. I'm totally done. I have no clutch that I want to sacrifice anymore. We but you all could. Roll race. You start from about 20 miles per hour, you drop a flag, and you then know, you just go. I will 100% oblige you in beating your wrapped blue flood Lamborghini. It's gonna feel bad to lose to that, isn't it? Uh, no, it's not. Let's do it. Let's find out. Okay, roll racing with Ed for all the marbles and all the glory. I don't know what marbles and glory we're talking about, but you know, I just want to beat him.
as we came back to the start line, I made sure to thank Ed for a good race. In your face! <laughs> Guys, that was a lot of fun, but I'm very, very glad it's over. My car is beat up. They all are. Uh, is yours gonna make it to wherever we have to go next? It's, it's fine. It really is fine. They're used to doing that. Doesn't smell like yeah. it. Doesn't smell fine. No. Oh. <laughs> a text from Auto Tempest. You may have survived this, but you're not done yet. Come on. Next door to you, there is a full road course. It is clear that the three of you wish to be automotive journalists, so now you'll get to see what it's actually like to be one. You must take your cars over there and complete a lap. But while you do so, you have to offer the audience three useful pieces of information and three entertaining metaphors about the car's acceleration, braking, and handling. If you misspeak, stutter, or say something wrong, you have to start over. Um, the time will continue, and the fastest lap wins. <laughs> I can barely form a coherent sentence. That's why Autotip has never sent me the text messages. <laughs> this, this is impossible. I can't read. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is going to be fun. Let's uh, go. No, it's not. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Oh, my parking brake. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the sun has set and we are at another racetrack that Auto Tempest has sent us to. We are at the road course at PBIR. So we've just left the drag strip and quite honestly, I think our cars are probably a little bit better suited to do this. A little more lefts and rights, not just hammer down. So what they've told us to do is to take these three cars that we found on Auto Tempest after scouring all the major car listing sites and chose to buy them to prove they are better than a C8 Corvette. And I think so far we're doing a tremendous job of yes, it. Yes, 100%. 100%. <laughs> so now what we have to do is just take them on a lap and talk a bit about them. Uh, yeah, except it's not really that simple now, is it? Auto Tempest also told us that we'd be doing a one-take review on these cars on a track we've never driven on at night, and that is uh, not... Hard. Yes, hard. I can barely walk and talk and, and think. So driving and talking and thinking, it, it, I, I can't like I can't string a sentence together right now. I'm, I'm just thinking about it. It's, it's scary. scary. Don't hurt yourself. I know. <laughs> well, I suppose we should make sure that you don't go right when left would be better. So how about we go out and uh, do a little exploration? Yeah, we can go out on the track and do some laps. There we go. Let's drive the track. <laughs> yes. All right. Let's take our cars in the truck. I'm good. Yes, this was all very epic. And while we were having fun learning the track, Tyler and I were not so secretly freaking out over the challenge ahead of us. Ed, on the other hand, wasn't. Um, what, what is a metaphor? What's another way to say, like a fish stick, but better? The Ferrari is yellow like a, a a yellow 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 Aston Martin good good good, good. Ferrari gooder Good goodest well if y'all are gonna sit over there and Google things I suppose I'll uh, I'll just go out and do it see you in a minute Good 
evening, everyone. I am out for a lap of PBIR in my 2006 Lamborghini Gallardo Spider. When this car was new, it would cost you $195,000. That is unless you made the unfortunate mistake of opting for the $10,000 sequential manual in-year transmission. The car goes 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds and on to a top speed of 195 miles per hour. Now, when the car came out, it was most well-known, perhaps, for its braking, which is impressive. However, I will concede that since this car was new, and about a month ago when I bought it, the flood that it experienced has compromised the confidence that you would experience in the brakes. I'd say now, it's a lot like arriving on a business trip and finding out that you forgot to pack any of your pants. Now, the acceleration is good. I wouldn't say it's Usain Bolt, but at the very least, it's a kid leaving the door for recess. But the best trait about this car is probably its handling. This car could sustain G-forces strong enough to put a pregnant woman into labor. But the all-wheel drive does compromise the steering wheel just a bit. It's like having an adolescent opportunity to do some bosom handling but finding out that they are fettered by the sheathing on the brassiere. The support is appreciated, but there are better and more preferred ways to go about it. So the other guys in their two-wheel drive cars might be having a little bit more fun through the twisties, but I'll tell you, I'm having an absolute blast. And here we are to enter the pits. No prep, no like spinning the wheels, figure out what well, you're going to say. Driving the car for a week. It would take me a week just to figure out what I'm going to say. I said the things about it. Oh. You're up. Uh, oh. Okay. Um, oh I got a thing. I got. I wrote it down. Uh. Got it in a Google Doc. Tape it to the mirror. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Okay. faster than a basket of breadsticks and a tour of Italy from the Olive Garden stops my gastrointestinal system. Yes! 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 Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Got it! Yes! I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I am not an automotive journalist, even though some people may think I am. Doing a review in car, especially on a track at speed, in sport
sport mode, it's gonna be difficult, but let's let's try it. Okay. So when it comes to oh, let's try this again. So while we're on the subject of my Aston Martin V12 Vantage S, this is one of my favorite, favorite cars because of its six-liter V12. And yes, that is a V6. So <laughs> now the handling is something altogether out of their uh, ugh, Let's start this over. We can do this. We can do this. This is a little harder than I thought. So to start talking about my 2015 Aston Martin V12 Vantage, one of my favorite things about this car is its V12 that measures six liters, but it's basically two four Taurus V6s put together. They are better than the sum of their parts because they make 565 horsepower and 457 foot-pounds of torque. This thing is a rocket ship. Gets from zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds all the way up to a top speed of 201 miles an hour. And if you think that's not fast, then you are just plain wrong. Now the handling is a different animal altogether. This has three separate modes. It has normal, it has sport, and it has track. We are in track because we are on a track right now, and the handling is like a Norse god with tap dancing shoes. It's lighter than you think, but when that hammer comes down, man, you better watch out. And the brakes, brakes, whoa, 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 whoa. So we just stopped from 130 there, and the brakes are like $5,000 a piece trash can lids. These are massive carbon ceramic rotors with huge calipers that can really stop this thing. I mean, it couldn't stop faster than if you hit a tree. And yes, that is something that some other automotive journalists have said, but we're not doing originality, we're doing quantity. Ugh. And I think that is gonna be it for my three things about this car and my three metaphors. So hopefully you like that review as much as I like driving this car. This one take thing is real, real hard. Oh. Okay. Well, uh, I can't words. <laughs> So At least you yes. got to know the track. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I did. So, um, I don't think I did very well. Well, I did a minute 43. No, one didn't. lap. No, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, you That's saw it. me leave and pull back in. That's, That's impossible. impossible. One lap. You just say the words. That's, that is literally, that is literally impossible. Huh. Sorry. Uh, so what was your time? Five minutes and 31 seconds. Well, uh, People have done worse, have they? <laughs> so, I had a stroke in the middle of my lap, <laughs> and uh, still managed a seven minute, 12 seconds. Okay. I got my words out. All, right. all the words. Yes, all the words. Okay, okay. all right, well, uh, I suppose that means I have passed this. Um, how did you enjoy it? Um, well, the car is interesting, and also, uh, when you're trying to say lots of things, you sort of go off track. Uh, both in your mind and in the car. Is two four tours V6s combined. Oh. And we're off the track. <laughs> we, we, we might have noticed it. It, we came, it, it came up in conversation. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, no. Come on. Oh, I've gotten this text from Auto Tempest. Right. Gentlemen, you've survived another track, but you're going to need to get some rest tonight. Horsepower is not like fine Italian wine, or in Freddie's case, warm British beer. It does not age well over time. And we expect that most of the horsepower that left the factory in your cars has found somewhere else to be. Tomorrow morning, you will depart for a dynamometer test, and we will find out what percentage of the horsepower your cars began life with is still in there. So dyno it says the closest to the original percentage passes. Okay, um, my car is basically brand new. Your cars are like a thousand years old. That is true, but you started with the most horsepower. So, oh. 
So perhaps Aston Martin lied about that as well. They're all wheel drive, so. Yeah. I got nothing there. We gotta, we gotta get them. Right. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I could say that. Dynamometer. Dynamometer. Is that the S is the word? No. Don't, don't hurt yourself. Yeah, I'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some yeah, rust, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. We'd like to thank Auto Tempest for sponsoring the Car Trek series. Be sure to check out autotempest.com and see where your next dream car is hiding.